G'day folks. Well, it's time to take apart a vibrator. And, uh, yeah, I'm sure you were slightly misled by the title, but it's still a vibrator. It's an industrial kind. It's not a pleasure toy. It's come off a uh, Yamato Dataway system, and it's used to move pr certain amounts of product into a weigh head. It's part of the weigh head. The rest of it's outside. But essentially, all it does is move product, be it plastic parts, food products like chips or raisins or whatever the hell you want. It just moves it down into the weigh head till the weigh head regis registers so much weight. Then it switches off the uh, coils and opens the little shutters on here and drops it into the bag or whatever it's got. So yeah, it's to do with weight distribution. It's an automatic weighing system vibrator. It has two 100 volt direct current coils. Um, they're switched via MOSFET, on off, on off, on off. Um, if I put power to it now, it'll just pull down and stay down until I release it. You actually need a computer controlled MOSFET switching system to alternate between the two of them and induce a linear vibration through this top plate which will have a normally have a stainless steel tray mounted on top of it and that stainless steel tray will be connected to a common feeder unit so you've got bulk amount of whatever it is to be weighed say in this case potato chips bulk potato chips coming in here and then you've got rows and rows of these weigh heads or sorry vibrators with stainless steel trays on top of them and they all, say so if you just start the machine up, they'll all start vibrating until these little carriers are full and they're mounted on top of the weigh head and the weigh head has the scale mechanism or electronic weight sensing mechanism in it along with a pneumatic cylinder which opens and closes these little shutters. So I'll try and describe that when I get into stripping the weigh head down but for now these are the vibrator units out of the Yamato dataway system. These are what yeah, essentially convey product from the bulk feeder down to each weigh head and as a result it'll end up in a package at a certain weight. They're actually quite an accurate system and they work very fast. Today's what dataway systems like the dataway Omega they can pump out several hundred weights per minute I believe couple of hundred weights per minute so it's pretty impressive for a uh, automatic system but today's ones are powered by fairly powerful microprocessors whereas these old ones were in the day they were still a powerful processor the old uh, Motorola 8600 series I think it was same as a lot of video game consoles but yeah anyway that's enough rambling on about that I've got to strip these things down and get rid of them so I'm going to pull off anything I can use, which is usually bolts, stainless steel straps, more bolts, top plate, whatever that is that looks like phenolic or something. I believe that's a cast iron weight. There's some shock absorbers in there and precision ground aluminum bottom plates. No, it's not even aluminum, it's stainless. So it's precision ground stainless steel bottom plates that'll keep fasteners, these straps, they, these things here are a reflex thing or a, a spring essentially. Looks like layers of Kevlar and rubber or something. Yeah, it's like layers of Kevlar and rubber. Very, very, very tough. That's not fiberglass, that's definitely Kevlar by the looks of it. I'll have to test one of them one day or shoot at it with an air rifle. <laughs> See if we can punch a hole in one of these at point blank range. Then we'll know if it's Kevlar or not. It's Kevlar layered correctly, particularly in soft fibre form, is very resistant to impact and vibration. But these are designed to flex so far and allow that top head to just do that. And it'll just convey material down to the weigh heads. And I just realised I made a mistake because the weigh head is down here, not back here. This is the back of the unit, this is the front. So it vibrates the material down into the little weigh heads itself 
and then it's distributed into packages. Oh, this would be one of those autopsies. A friend gave me a bottle of scotch, so why not? <laughs> Already had a quarter, oh, what? Yeah, quarter of a bottle of scotch this afternoon. Nice big clean up, made a big, big uh, impact on the amount of crap lying around here. And right now, I want to strip these things down and get rid of them. I'm throwing a lot of stuff out at the moment. All right, it's time for air tools. <laughs> size socket I know that much but that going the wrong way. Stainless steel plates, very handy. Okay, those blocks aren't any soft material, they're actually cast iron. No, steel. Solid steel blocks. Probably additional bolt on counterweight. Also, very handy. You can weld them onto the bottom of something and then bolt it down to the floor or whatever. They're half an inch thick. Okay. That's a good start. top plate that holds the vibration channel or whatever the hell you want to call it, distribution channel. It's also fairly well made, stainless steel. So they're not laminated together, they're just layered. It's tough shit. That is very hard, that's like phenolic or something. I'm running out of battery actually. Damn it, camera. <laughs> I can stay there. I'll clean up this mess and I'll charge the batteries. Okay, let's continue this. I did kind of chop the bottom off the other one. There isn't much holding these mounts on apart from screw threads, but those ones there, getting to these nuts is quite hard without a direct line of sight attachment, so I kind of butchered them. But I'll end up with four or eight of these uh, threaded mounts, assuming they want to come out. But that solid 10mm stainless steel bar, surface ground, very precisely made. Just got to clean all this other crap off it. There's washers just held down with Sikaflex. And the mounts themselves, they just unscrew and thread it in. So, let's turn this one upside down.
couldn't find a half inch drive socket that fits these. The 10 mil head. I know I've got a 10 mil socket somewhere, but I can't find it at the moment. So I'm using 11. And if I'm breaking free first, they generally spin out. This one has been stubborn. speed for the win. Big cast iron weight. Quite handy for throwing through a television. I'm going to keep these for that purpose. <laughs> Perfect for throwing through a television. Alright, so that's the counterweights off. Now we've just got the rest of the uh, reflex mechanism or whatever the hell you want to call it and two electromagnetic coils. So there's the bottom plate, mounts the uh, counterweight or whatever is on it. Cast iron, pretty straightforward. Not important. Same deal. Also not important. Lots of nice washers though, stainless steel bolts. Bare assembly now. Kevlar or whatever that is. Top plate. Also fairly useless. separate them. Fairly tough looking material. Whatever this is, I'll have to do some ballistic tests. <laughs> I want to make a proper little air gun that just snaps onto the air hose. I'll modify a normal uh, air blow gun with a long barrel on it. We'll stuff 250 psi plus a 22 caliber air rifle pellet down it and it should make a bit of fun. So, now all we've got is the coil assemblies. These are only 100 volt coils, so it'll be fun to put 240 volts through them. I don't think they'll like it. Uh, I suppose you call it the mid frame, coil mount frame, whatever the hell you call it. Useless to me, so it's scrap. top frames and the bottom plates, the stainless steel plates, but the rest of it can go in the bin. It's all completely useless. All these wires have been chewed to bits by rats as well. They didn't have to cut any of these wires off, they've just been chewed apart. Damn rats. But that was before I got it. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> 
You can see rat traces on a lot of the boards and things inside the control cabinet too. Bad news. I don't like rodents. I don't mind cats though. There's a nest of cats at the lot next door to my work. Under a shipping container. I know they definitely don't know about it, but the kittens that are coming out of there are fairly, well, tame, so it'd be nice to take one or two home, considering they're just going to go feral and end up getting picked up by animal control and destroyed. It'd be nice to save a couple. But yes, I haven't seen rats for a while around here, as in about a week and a half, two weeks. <laughs> so, with a bit of luck they'll go away. It's just that time of year we get lots of rodents around. So, we've got two coils, a pair of coils anyway, identical. MOSFET driver alternates power between the two of them, it creates a linear vibration movement, it moves stuff along the conveyor tray. Those are the spring, spring material, reflex mechanism, whatever you want to call it. I'm sure Aperture Science would have some kind of a description for it. Aperture Laboratories, I should say. <coughs> Stainless plates, solid steel blocks. Well worth stripping down. And I still have one intact as a little memento. So that's the end of that one, folks, and thanks for watching.